I've been in love with the sky since birth, and when I could fly, I wanted to go higher, to enter space and become a kid of heights. Space is so close. It'll take eight minutes to get there and 20 to get back. It seems I am leaving the planet forever. There's no power that can bring me back. For the first time in my life, I see the horizon as a curved line. It's accentuated by a thin seam of dark blue light, our atmosphere. Obviously, this is not the ocean of air I've been told it was so many times in my life. I'm terrified by its fragile appearance. I see layers as I look down. I see clouds towering up. I see their shadows on the sunlit plains. And I see a ship's wake in the Indian Ocean. And brush fires in Africa. And a lightning storm walking its way across Australia. I see the reds and pinks of the Australian desert. And it's just like a stereoscopic view of all nature, except I'm 190 miles up. A Chinese tale tells of some men sent to harm a young girl who, upon seeing her beauty, become her protectors rather than her violators. That's how I feel seeing the Earth for the first time. I cannot help but love and cherish her. Night, and we are crossing the Atlantic. We are coming upon Europe. Below are a multitude of silver sparks. They form a glorious glittering carpet. Finally, a shimmering star with radiating highways appears against the background of this carpet, Moscow. I press my face to the window in my darkened cubicle and look through it. I experience something completely different. I look at the earth as it glides underneath me and think how everlasting all this is. After I'm gone and my children and my grandchildren our Earth will still be gliding through the eternity of space in its measured, unhurried way. If you have experiments to run, stay away from the window. A camera malfunctions. I'm outside on an EVA. I can take a few moments to think about what's happening to me. I'm staring at the spectacle before my eyes. Earth? I'm no longer inside something with a window looking out at a picture. I'm out there, here. There are no frames, there are no limits, there are no boundaries. I'm really out here, going 17,000 miles an hour, ripping through space, a vacuum, and there's not a sound. There's silence, the depth of which I've never experienced before. Do I deserve this? this fantastic experience. Have I earned this in some way? Am I separated out to be touched by God to have some special experience that others cannot have? And I know the answer to that is no. There's nothing I've done to deserve this, to earn this. It's not a special thing for me. I know very well at this moment, and it comes through to me so powerfully that I'm the sensing element for man. I look down and see the surface of that globe that I lived on all this time. And I know all those people down there. And they are like me. They are me. And somehow, I represent them. And somehow, I recognize that I'm a piece of this total life. And when I go back, There'll be a difference in that world now. A difference in that relationship between me and that planet. And me and all those other forms of life on that planet. Because I'm having that kind of experience. It's a difference. And it's so precious. Earth is so close. It took eight minutes to get to space. And it will take 20 to get back home.
where the sand mature lands, rocks and stills. A strange feeling of complete, almost solemn, contentment suddenly overcomes me. The weather is foul, but I can smell earth, unspeakably sweet and intoxicating. Once again I stand on earth. I wobble somewhat, all around. As far as my eye can see stretches gray autumnal steppe, not a shrub, not a tree in sight. I'm so happy to see the ground, already a little covered by the first fluffy snow. I want to fall into it, hug it, and press my cheek in it. And wind, wind after long days in space. How utterly delightful. I thought I left the planet forever. Now, I know the power that brings us home.